In this particular video, we will be discussing about the Trantel number and its significance with respect to the thermal mass flow meter. So many of us know how the thermal mass flow meter works, but do you know what is the Prandtl number and what is its significance with respect to the thermal mass flow measure measurement? What will happen if the fluid Prandtl number is more than one and you have installed a thermal mass flow meter? Will the thermal mass flow meter still read accurately? So all these questions will be answered in the upcoming slides. So stay tuned. So in this video, we will not discuss detail about the thermal mass flow meter, but for, for sake of discussion, I will explain the basic principle in a nutshell. So in thermal mass flow meter, there are two sensors basically, one is self-heated sensor and another is reference sensor. So as the flow goes through the pipeline, the mass flow is basically proportional to the difference of temperature between the self-heated sensor and the reference sensor. So anyway, we can say that mass flow is proportional to temperature differential. In other way, we can say that it will depend on the thermal thermal distribution which can be in the form of the conduction or in the form of the convection. So if the fluid that is flowing through this thermal mass flow meter is not conductive enough then whether this principle still hold true or we will be able to measure the mass flow meter? I think no. And this is what the Prandtl number signifies. So Prandtl number is basically the ratio of momentum diffusivity to the thermal diffusivity. If the values of the uh, Prandtl number is less than one, then the thermal diffusivity dominates. And if it is greater than one, then momentum diffusivity dominates. For example, in the case of the liquid mercury, the value of thermal diffusivity or the Prandtl number is 0.025, which indicates that heat conduction is more significant than convection. So the thermal diffusivity is dominant. Again, Prandtl number is the ratio of the viscous diffusion rate divided by the thermal diffusion rate. Viscous diffusion rate means obviously the momentum diffusivity and the thermal diffusion rate is the thermal diffusivity. Again, we can write V in terms of mu by sigma where the mu is the dynamic viscosity and rho is the density. And alpha can be written as K divided by Cp by uh, rho where K is the thermal conductivity, Cp is the specific gravity and rho is the density. So we can write it as mu into Cp divided by K. So with this, we can conclude that the Prandtl number is basically a dimensionless number and it is named after its inventor who is the German engineer Ludwig Prandtl. The Prandtl number is defined as the ratio of the momentum diffusivity to the thermal diffusivity. The momentum diffusivity or as it is normally called the kinematic viscosity tells us the material resistance to the shear flow and different layer of the flow travel with the different velocities with respect to different speed of the adjacent layer in relation to the density that is Prandtl number. So again, <clears throat> we can see that Prandtl number increases with the specific heat and viscosity and decreases with the thermal conductivity. So as the thermal conductivity of the fluid decreases, the PR increases. So as the thermal conductivity increases, PR decreases. 
so we want less pr for uh, for for thermal mass flow meter design so if we check at the air temperature uh, air at the room temperature the prandtl number is around 0.71 whereas for water it is 7.56 so air uh, so if the medium is air we can measure the mass flow with the help of the thermal mass flow meter much more easily compared to water because in the case of the water prandtl number is high so the most of the thermal uh, thermal co uh, i mean thermal uh, equilibrium will be attained in the form of the convection rather than conduction so uh, in this case uh, the mass flow meter will not be uh, proportional to the um, delta t so that's why uh, the prandtl number is important while designing the thermal mass flow meter and that's why thermal mass flow meter is very successful in the case of the air and other uh, low density gases so hope you have understood the prandtl number and next time when you see the prandtl number in the thermal mass flow meter uh, data sheet you will not get surprised and know the significance of it Thank you.